exactly is he talking about? It's time! It's time for me to make an appearance! Kwaki? Uh, I can also see him. Is this character part of the show? In Dream Hill, Clocky is everywhere and can do anything! Like right now! I can be your translator! Tick-tock! <laughs> Hanu says, battle! We must do battle! <laughs> Retreat for the future of Dreamville! <laughs> Touch that suspicious looking TV right now! So they just jumped inside that TV. Sheesh. Logic in this plot and dialogue is really being pushed to its limits. just now. That's right, pal. The upcoming script is just exploding with all sorts of high-level shenanigans. Last we saw, Hanu was preparing for battle. Suddenly, he hears heavy footsteps coming from the hallway. The mischief makers have broken into his home. But brave Hanu won't go down without a fight. He instantly sprints for the storage room, ready for a do or die showdown against the baddies. But we still don't have any weapons in hand. Guess what? Hanu's favorite bazooka just so happens to be in that storage room. <laughs> so get a move on. <sighs> what a coincidentally convenient plot twist. It'd be even more awesome if the organizers allowed me to wear armor. The storage room. It's behind the shelves, right?
Now we should have a way of dealing with those baddies. This thing feels just like Sword Locus too. Again, but no big deal. We're pretty handy with this bazooka now. Bazooka. Um, never mind. <laughs> Let's hurry over to the next stage. Congratulations to both of you! Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves! But, uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pelicone's vested superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar! Welcome to the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises Superstar Showdown.
think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. We don't have much time. May fate allow us to meet again, Knight of Beauty. In that case, let's make our way to the end. Panacone's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival before entering the Grand Theater. 
I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you, wishing you joy under their radiance. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Panacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, Equality non-existent. Common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Panacone would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest? Or a sweet dream paradise for all? of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, We'll at least know what Welt and Ms. Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. You, you mean, mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the charity festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacone. And then every one of their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? <sighs> I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its 
sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead? so that no lies may be concealed. I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you, you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence, so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth. Just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul. Please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself, always heeding their admonishments? Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god? Betraying their name. Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced. Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were kin, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony, 
Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the Great One? Shime. Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, Echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang. Being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's a pity that things have turned out this way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Penacony is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Penacony. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. Smart kid. You're just as sharp as the other one. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, 
possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps, and see once again where this road leads. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so he should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood who would later become the Dream Master of Penacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived a time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony Dove all on its own. The baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it, and feed it. 
giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. Charmony Dove. After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. I watched it for a long while by the window, probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground, only to keep trying. Finally, on the 137th attempt, it succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground, unable to grasp the direction of the air currents. The fall shattered its wings. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught, finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes. They all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. I deeply regret the choices we made. Next, let us head to the second decision. 
This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. <laughs>